Welcome to Sports World Dash USA. Every week, our hosts present a fun and informative dive into the world of sports memorabilia. Join radio legend Mikey Adams and the owner of the largest, most established sports memorabilia store in New England, Phil Castanetti, as they take you through the world of card collecting, collectible autographs, and all things sports memorabilia. You have questions? Phil has answers. You want to find an exclusive item? Phil will find it. You want to buy the items on display during the show? They will sell it to you. Get your bidding fingers ready. Here's Mikey and Phil. Is that does that mean it's time for me to talk? You know, I'm a radio legend. I heard that in the intro. Uh, but usually there's someone pointing at me. Go. Oh, that's TV. Go. Okay. Corey's here. Uh, Phil Castanetti, who's normally sitting right over here uh, where Corey is sitting, uh, who's he's Corey's dad, Phil yep. Castanetti, is under the weather today. Now, I'm not sure exactly what that means, but it can't be good if cuz I've known Phil for a long time and he always shows up uh, unless he's not unless he's under the weather. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> so there we go. There he is. <laughs> but Corey, his delightful son here has brought a, a box of something new we're going to open up on the show and whoa, and we got a motorcycle in the parking lot. <laughs> uh, and I brought something too and we, we welcome you to the this is the now third edition of the sportsworld-usa.com podcast. Is, it, is this a video podcast? What do you call them? Vodcast? I should have brought my vodka. Uh, <laughs> uh, and we, uh, we welcome you. We were, now, we were a little bit late because we had a, a technical snafu. I did. I couldn't get up the stairs. <laughs> That's, you're laughing with me, and, and it's true. Uh, but we have uh, some fun things going on today. An autograph's... And cards that are special that, uh, I guess, Ben, you, you, you're you the guy that got those cards, huh? Is you, are, are yeah, they, I brought in some of my own personal collection. Yeah, yeah. Just had an emergency here. Yeah, had, it, normally Phil brings in some stuff, too, from the Sports World Store, which is in Saugus, 87 Broadway. Yes. In Saugus, the famous Sports World Collectibles store. Uh, but Phil, again, he's not here, so we're going to have to do with what we got but let me pull this out first you want to open rip this box yeah. open cuz you and I are going to have a battle of the packs pack wars let's go is that what it's called yep i want to bring this up here this is something i'm actually going to auction you know i don't usually do this but i'm going to auction this to a yankee fan cuz i'm not a yankee fan you know what this is i'll describe this in great detail it's tall that's the one thing it's a very very big print done by armand lamontaine a very famous a notable artist in the world of sports. I think he did some of the statues that are in and around the Boston Garden, but he's a world-renowned and clearly nationally known artist who did this print of Joe DiMaggio. Now, this print was done and released in 1991, and it's referred to on the bottom as The Streak. This was celebrating the 50th anniversary of Joe DiMaggio's 56-game hitting streak, which was... Still one of the unbreakable records, one of the momentous moments in the history of Yankee baseball and Joe DiMaggio's career, clearly. Now, <clears throat> this was uh, signed by Armand Lamontagne and numbered. There were exactly 1,941 copies of this print made and signed by, by the artist himself. This is number 327. I asked Phil Castanetti, the expert... What this is worth. He said $750. I said, that's pretty good. It's not bad. I mean, I, the frame, I don't have the frame. It's, it's the print. You can frame it yourself. If you'd like to buy this, then contact me on Facebook, you Yankee fans. I don't have any room for it on my wall, but this is a nice and signed and one-of-a-kind item featuring the late, great Joe DiMaggio, Hall of Famer. Joe DiMaggio's best stat yeah. Was in 1941, the year of the streak. Yes, he had uh, you know 550 at bats. He he uh, had the 56 game hitting streak. He batted like 360 or something that year, and he only struck out 13 times. 13 strikeouts in 540 at bats. This uh, this guy hit for power. Yeah, so he'd swing hard. Take but Tony to, Gwynn to have exactly to yeah. have that kind of bat control to not strike out. The great Joe DiMaggio, and uh, it's a beautiful number. And uh, if you uh, contact Mikey, uh, Mikey Adams on Facebook, and I'll, I'll make it available to you. I think it was a minimum bid what, of 500. What number was it out of? Um, this is number 327. Number 327 out of? 1941. 1941, go. the year of the streak, 50-year anniversary. Joe DiMaggio, Armand Lamontagne, signed print. And uh, 
There's only one of them that I have. <laughs> uh, and uh, not a bad price, though. I'd give it, oh, you know, it's, if it's, that's framed up, that's it's, it's worth seven thousand bucks. Yeah. Uh, you know, I I don't want to take less than five hundred dollars for it, but if you want to go over that number uh, or, or on that number, contact me on Facebook and uh, we'll donate the proceeds to charity. There we go. Charity being my my cat. <laughs> I have a cat named Charity. <laughs> I could have gone the Sonny Bono and Cher Bono thing and named my cat my cat Chastity, but you know what happened last time? You know, Chastity was a cute little girl and now is a big fat bearded guy named Chaz. And I don't want my cat looking <laughs> like that. <laughs> so you guys are opening Topps Baseball Series Two, yeah, 2020. Yes, sir. So we're doing a little edition of so Pack Wars. What's the Brand best card new. in here, uh, Mike Trout? Um, there's like a really rare, uh, like Luis Robert that's selling for like 300 bucks right now. Wow. It's his uh, rookie like variation, and um, but pretty much there's like trout autographs in this product. And yeah, any of that stuff's just in the thousand dollar range automatically. And they're all in the, in the season two. Uh, this is tops regular series yeah. two. Yeah. yeah. Now tops is owns baseball now, right? When it comes pretty to, much, yeah. they have all their licensing uh, um, like agreements. No one else can make uh, cards like with um, with, with the logos with Slow the logos. Down yeah. A little bit. Yeah. There you go. Cold Tucker. Luke Weaver. What's his problem? Oh, I got him upside down. That's my problem. <laughs> you know, if you're going to read the names, you better turn them around the right way. <clears throat> now, Chris Taylor, you, you let me know if I hit anything good here, okay? Just pull out the guy you think's the best in your card. Uh, yeah, but, your... I, I, you know, this it's been a year since I saw baseball, so it's hard for me to know. Matt Beatty. Dodgers? I don't know. Is he good? Got a Will Clark all-star. Jonathan Daza. See, here's the problem. The players are all. I'm much better on the older players yeah. because I had was able to watch them for it, mm -hmm. let it sink in. You're paying attention to the young guys coming up through because you're you're involved in the card industry yeah, definitely. and the and the box breaks as we call it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's. I like to tell people it's like a stock. You know, you buy a player's card for hundred bucks when he just gets drafted. Wait three or four years when he gets to the major leagues. Yeah. It, it, it could be worth five bucks. It could be worth like a. 10,000. You just don't know. You know what I mean? So how many do you have in your personal collection that were like, oh, this guy's going to be good, and then just were a complete bust, and now you don't know what to do with him? Um, more I than you'd think. Because <laughs> like, I have like um, like a decent-sized collection, sure. so like anything is just going to do that. Like you you'll have, have the collection? two or three. You'll have like the two or three guys who just go like good, and then you just have like – Yeah, some fizzle, yeah, some yeah. fizzle off. So what Giancarlo get? Stanton, uh, what is that? That's like a vintage? Yeah, it's like the uh, like an insert, like the 35-year anniversary. Okay, so is that worth anything, or is that just, is that just nice uh, to it's have? It's not here? bad. It's it's better than the than the base. Yankee fans delighting in this. Uh, baseball is going to start, uh, what was the date they gave? The end of July? Yeah. Is that what it is? And we're all relieved about that, because this, this has been awful. I mean, they're going to play a 60-game season, I guess. And I don't know what you know what happens to the schedule. What about the season ticket holders? What about the people? What about the the TV contracts that they have? Uh, you know, I, I mean, it, it's it's just a mess financially uh, in Major League Baseball. I don't know what they're going to do. And for a sport like baseball that's like dying, they should they should just get on it. Like they they have no time to waste here. Especially this is a maker. This I think is. What's going to make or break baseball for the next generation? And what are your thoughts, uh, both you guys, on the 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 what they're going to do in extra innings by starting a man on base. second base? You could lose a perfect game. Yeah, it, you could lose anything. You could have a yeah. perfect game and lose the freaking game because the guy on second, you know, steals third and a, a pass the, ball yeah. and he's home. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Mikey, when did you start collecting cards? Like, when were you first buying <coughs> packs of cards? My first real involvement was the 1964 Tops. I was wild. And again, I, I've described even on this program that for a nickel, you know, my parents would give me a nickel to shut me up any day of the week. In fact, sometimes they'd give me three, four nickels. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd get the packs of cards. It was like the, my happiest moment of yeah. my day. Uh, and, 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 and back then, you got for five cents, you got five cards, and you got, and you got a piece of gum. So I was like, yeah, this is great. So I had millions and millions of cards. You know, we would flip them. Now, I can still mm -hmm. do this. Can I stand up here? Are you going to flip cards right now? Yeah, we'd flip them. There was a thing called topsies where you'd flip the card, and then the other guy would flip, and if you landed on, on the other card, oops, see, that missed. If you landed on the other card, you get to keep what's down there. 
So I just did topsies right there. All right. Now I can do them down there on the floor. I can do them for distance, like even way over there. Watch this. You're okay, bre- you're breaking a lot of people's hearts right now. This <laughs> <laughs> is unbelievable. Okay, so there's a top. Okay, and you try to. F- Oops. <laughs> hey, get that box out of my way. You try to flip them on top, like oh, and sometimes there'd be twenty, thirty cards down there because the guy would. Throw them out there real far, and then you couldn't lean past a certain. They called it ball stretching. I don't know why. <laughs> you couldn't lean far. That's cheating. So topsies was one game, and then it was match heads or tails. You play all kinds of games for these cards, but the problem is that they'd get beat up. Yeah. yeah, they'd hit the cement, and they would end up all scruffy. And what's this card? Warriors of the Diamond. Alex Bregman. He's not in good shape right now because they're because they're calling oh. him a cheater, right? So this card right here, it's called Topps Home Run Challenge. They yep. just introduced this, I think, two years ago. So this one's Paul Goldschmidt, and I scratched the code on the back. And um, if you guess, like, a date that he's going to hit a home run, you win, like, a prize. But does he come to your so house I, and eat dinner with you or something? Or? It says, uh, register for the challenge and choose the game date you think this player <laughs> will hit a home run. If he does, you win a prize. All challenge... Uh, will be entered into the grand prize drawing for a trip to the 2021 T-Mobile Home Run Derby. Wow. Oh, that's So cool. if you guess it and win, you get a shot at going uh, to the Derby. So Future stars cool. mean anything? Uh, that's basically insert- like their second year's second year card. Okay. It means they're not quite there yet. Now, what am I looking for here? What's this sparkly one I got here? Uh, Pete Alonzo. What's that? Uh, I just got a, a Bregman one of those. Those are a uh, new insert this year. So the inserts nice are worth a little though. more. They're special. Yeah. Uh, here's Altuve. He, he's a star, right? Um, <laughs> when he's not mic'd the, up. Yeah, uh, the betting odds for um, <laughs> who's going to hit hit first for the Astros came out. They, uh, they have betting odds for the the first player who's going to get hit with the ball on the Astros. Is yeah, because they'll be they'll be targeted. Yeah, no question. What about the Red Sox? What about the Yankees? The Yankees have supposedly been exposed as a team that have done yeah. some cheating as well, right? I got, apparently, I guess the Red Sox and the Yankees are out of it, but I mean, see, I, okay. a little bias from me. And so who are the guys right now? Give me the top five guys, Corey, uh, who, who are, are commanding the most attention and or value with their cards. In the MLB now or yep. minor leagues too? Does well, it matter? It, yeah, no, it, I think it doesn't have to. Yeah, well, it's just who are the, the top ones that you'd put a star next to? Number as as one as is Mike Trout, without a doubt. Yeah. He's the top guy right now. Um, let's see, like some other guys are like, um, let me think. So basically it's, it's Trout easily number one. Then you got guys like, um, like, I haven't really thought about this. How about Francisco Lindor? Is he a big star? Cause I got a sparkly he's, one. He's, he's up there. I would say Judge is up there. Bellinger's up there. Now, I've got two of these so far, these sparkly cards. Yep. What are those called? The Topps 2020 se- uh, Second Series. What are, the, what are these called? Because i got two of those so far. They are Topps 2030. That's what, that's what it's called. And it's and gone. You drop it. <laughs> and don't it's you gone. step on that now. We don't have Mickey Mantle here to pick it up for you today. So this card I got is like a vintage stock card. So um, I'll compare it to this card. Do you see the uh, Topps logo right there? Yeah. See how it's different? It has the vintage Topps logo. Yeah. Can you hold that up to the camera? Yep. Top. That's the vintage. That's the vintage logo. So like, just feel a regular card and then feel this one. There's. It's number to ninety nine. It's Brent it's got Shutter. Different texture. But you can feel it, right? How oh, yeah, it's yeah. almost like a vintage card stock on yep. it. Is it yeah. slightly thicker too than the traditional cards? Just a hair thicker. It looks it, yeah, like very thin, because it's almost like the cardboard feeling rather than mm-hmm. like the uh, the laminate. So, uh, it's a hair thicker. Speaking of thicker hair, Doctor Robert Leonard, one eight hundred get hair. Corey, you don't need that yet, but some, <laughs> someday you might. Oh no, you're not gonna. You're fine. You're not gonna have any problem with it with the hair thing. <laughs> yeah, he's got a nice mop up there. The way you know that you're losing your hair, by the way, it's very simple. You know, you, you take a shower once a week, and if the drain is filled, or your pillow is covered with them. <laughs> so you that's only the, shower once a see, week? See, that's the thing. That's the thing about Dr. Leonard. He's not even a sponsor of this show, but I'm giving him a free plug. <laughs> plug! Yeah. The reason is because they use your naturally growing hair, and they just 
transplant it from a place where you have a lot of hair to a place where you don't have a lot of hair and it makes you less bald or, or not bald at all. Uh, I'm still waiting for the big, I'm, I'm looking for the big one where everybody goes wah, wah, or no, you know, <laughs> like, whoa. Here's a cool card, Mookie Betts in the Dodgers uniform. Oh, no. Hold yeah. that to the camera because I will throw up. <laughs> <laughs> Mookie Betts in a Dodger uniform. I don't I, like it. I don't like it either. I don't like the fact that they, they first of all, greed entered into this. And I think he might have missed, missed the boat a little bit because of, I think the salary structure is going to change a little bit now with this, what's happened to baseball, don't I, you? I definitely do. I just don't think players are going to have that, you know, value. Because, I mean, they're wasting a year. Like, Mookie could just not play a single game with the Dodgers. And okay, yeah, I got something special. And not, sorry to interrupt you. This is so thick, I thought it was two cards. David Ortiz David. jersey card. Wow. David go. Ortiz jersey card for Mikey. Oh, yeah. Who wants it? <laughs> it's number two, it's 199. Wow, what number is it out of 199? 56. Wow. Nothing special, but... Well, what do you mean nothing Game special? Is. It's a uni card. Well, normally, like, say a David Ortiz card numbered, um, like, 34 wow. out of um, 199 would sell for, like, $5, $10 more because that's his jersey number. Mm -hmm. Oh, Or, I like, you. the yeah. first printed card sells a little bit better. Yeah. yeah. Like, one of 199 That's what a good one, though. See that? Yeah. What, what about so the am I, winning, am I winning the battle of the packs now? I think you just took over. Right yeah. there. Just there. <laughs> David over. Ortiz you clutched for me home. again. I, last time I saw David Ortiz, there was an event up in New Hampshire. I was working at a radio station ever so briefly in New Hampshire for about a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And they had an event where uh, David Ortiz came by and was meet, meet and greet type thing. And, and I, I hadn't talked to him in such a long time. So I went up there on the stage. And he, get, he gave me a huge hug. And I said, you remember me? He goes, of course, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, uh, I said, and you are? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, no, he's a great guy. He, David yeah. Ortiz has always been nice. Every time we've interviewed him on, we used to interview him on the radio station. He was always very nice to me, very polite, and uh, obviously one of the greats and uh, one of the one of the clutch greats of all time, yeah. Nathan Evaldi. <laughs> if he could just stay healthy for more than twelve innings, I'd be really happy. Uh, here's a vintage. Oh wait, Ricky Henderson All Star card. That's one of those vintage things. You go. I'm having fun with this. You want you want to flip for money? <laughs> want you play some topsies with me? Uh, Corey, now you live in what town do you live in? Uh, Linfield, but I'm uh, moving to Burlington. You are? Yes. Did you get a job at the mall? <laughs> no. Um, it's I'm just, jokes. we're just heading out. You know, Good for I, you, man. That's right. I grew up in Linfield, though. Uh, that's where I'll pretty much still be. But For those of you wondering, I am winning this contest here. I got to pull a miracle out to win this one. You really? Because that Ortiz Uni card was the, was the big pull. Yeah, that's, there's one uh, autograph or rally card per box. So, Oh, wait. What's this shiny thing? What is that? Those are like a, um, like a variation insert. So it's basically, uh, you can get like four or five of these a box. And it's just like the, the base set, but it has like a chrome tint to it. Corey knows everything about – well, see, see, he was raised in the industry. So his dad, Phil Castanetti, is the, is the New England's most renowned uh, expert on values, card, cards, memorabilia, signed autographs, val validating autographs. Uh, and the, uh, the key to, uh, to getting the most out of Phil Castanetti's knowledge and expertise is to go to the store. Well, yeah. The actual brick-and-mortar store, 87 Broadway, Saugus, Route 1. And uh, Phil's been, you know, in the business for 30, what, 35 years? 35 years or so? I think it's going to be 35. And, and how old are you? I'm 19. You're 19. So you've, so been, you've been there, you know, he, in his life for, yeah. for a long, about half of the time he's been in this business. He was born in the store. Yeah. I, I was, <laughs> I've been going there since as long as I can remember just wow, trying to, like, pick up on stuff. Like, well, I remember yeah. even before I could, like, really, like. Not like talk, but... Um, I mean, you do. talk about special inserts. This is what uh, happens sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> now, we got some magical cards coming out of here. Oh, another Astro. Put that over there in the Astro pile. They're cheaters. Uh, that's Reddick. Josh Reddick, by the way, this is how I am with birthdays. February 19th. What's his birthday? Can you, can you read that on there? Without looking. I, February 19th, right? Yeah. <laughs> what year? What year? I don't know. Does that matter? I'm, I'm only joking with that. No, he, uh, the reason I say that is 1988. I, <laughs> is it? <laughs> Sorry. Wait, I, wait, I, I thought I was like. That was just a. Well, he'd be 32 then. That's a guess. 
87. Son of a bitch. Ah, oh. Ben sucks. Ben oh. sucks. Now, the reason I knew that was because uh, my birthday is February 19th. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see? Right. And, and you know who else's birthday is on February 19th? Uh, I don't know. Dave Stewart. Oh. The pitcher. Yeah. Yeah. You know who else? Former Red Sox catcher Russ Nixon. You know who else? Smokey Robinson of the Miracles fame. See, I remember these things. John Travolta. I got them all. All right, now who? Uh, wait a minute. Another Astro? How come I'm getting all the Astros? <laughs> so we're opening a box here. We're having, oh, Chris Sale. Is he going to pitch? <laughs> uh, we're opening up this, this box of cards. We're having a pack war. But what you normally do is you have a box breaks, they're yeah. called. D tell everybody what those are about and how they can get involved with um, you. So basically with like the cards getting so expensive recently, um, like I've kind of like taken other people's uh, like ideas and I've, I've kind of like made them my own pretty much. And I've been doing these box breaks, which is um, say I buy a box of this for X amount of money. I'll split it up evenly between I'll do like either six, the six divisions mm -hmm. or like 30 MLB teams. So, um, you just buy in. I'll randomize it. Uh, you just get for the random team. Say you get like a, the Orioles or the Red Sox or the Yankees. Every single one of those cards that I pull out of this box gets shipped to you or you can come in the store and pick them up. So right. it's a cheap way to collect, uh, you, you know, get some team. good stuff. It, e either or, a specific team or if you're just looking to, you know, expand your collection and not spend $350, and, and $400. Oh, yeah, yeah. You can pull thousands of dollars like worth of cards out of here. So. So, for example, if someone had, if that was one of the box breaks for your show, yep. and someone had got the Red Sox, yeah, they, they would have got gotten the, Ortiz. the David Ortiz. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yeah. Why now? Why does this pack feel thicker? It does. Did, did I suddenly get one that has a thicker like that? Remember the Ortiz card that I pulled yeah. out is thicker because it's got this one feels thicker to me than this one, and I think that's pretty. I think it's obvious. Maybe there's somebody. Somebody back at the factory just made a mistake and put in extra cards by mistake. I'm looking for something thick in here. There, Frank Robinson. That's a he just passed away. Hall of Famer Frank Robinson, one of the greats. I've talked to many major league pitchers that have told me that Frank Robinson. I asked Louis Tiant one time, mm -hmm. and Bill Lee. What Louis say? Uh, who who hit the longest home run off of you? Okay, in your career, and Louis said. Well, Bill Lee said Frank Robinson by far. And then Louis Tion said, oh, Frank Robinson. <laughs> <laughs> he probably was just saying that just because he didn't know who else to say at the time. But He said, no, Lu Frank Louis Robinson, man. And, so, and then uh, Bill Mambouquet was telling me that uh, Bill, the late Bill Mambouquet was telling I said, who hit the longest home run off you? Because I always ask pitchers, you know. Yeah. And he said, uh, oh, Frank Robinson. I, he goes, he, I played him in – in Cleveland, when he was playing in Cleveland, he said he hit a ball halfway down the left field bullpen, which was aimed out toward the back of the parking lot. He said it was well over 450 feet. Wow. And Raditz was in the bullpen because he was a bullpen guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mambo kept, sat down. On the, he got pulled out of the game. He sat down on the, on the bench, and the phone from the bullpen rings, and Mambo kept pitches, picks it up, and it's Raditz. Raditz goes, how'd you hold that one? He wanted to know Jeez. how he held the pitch to rub it to rub it in. It was the longest <laughs> shot anyone had ever seen. But that's how those guys were, man. They were ripping yeah. on each other all the time. Oh yeah. You know, the ball players, they give each other crap. If a guy pops up, a little weak pop up to second base, the players on the bench will turn to each other. One of them will say, Full grown man hit that ball. <laughs> and so, the, other, the other guy will say with a family. Corey, when Mikey and I were younger and collecting yeah. cards, grading wasn't really a thing. It had come out about when I a couple of years after I started collecting, yeah. but it didn't really become big until like the late '90s, early 2000s. Yep. So, from my own personal collection, I brought in some stuff that I had recently um, picked up via pack, and I just wanted to get your opinion because you're someone that's far more entrenched into yeah. the sports card world. Whether or not you think this is a card that should be graded or not. All right, definitely. First up, Judge uh, Rookie from Optic uh, Prism. Definitely get that one graded. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> Judge the, these rookie. are uh, good, good cards. They normally grade pretty well, and they have a good selling value once they're graded. Mm -hmm. So, um, definitely something to look into with grading that one. Um, like I, I, before I send it out, like when if someone like brings it in the shop, I'll take it out and like I'll check the condition, and like 
just to like see if it's like really like in good in shape or condition. yeah, just so they don't send something out that I could. I could have just said this isn't going to grade well. This is going to this is damaged. Like, right? It's not worth your money. You're going to waste your money. It's going to come back, and you're going to lose the value. You got some car. imperfection. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So you just take a quick peek at it. Look at the corners, the edges, uh, like the surface. Looks good. So you is just that your card, Ben? Yeah, every, he has a stack of some of my stuff from uh, my personal collection. Okay. Harper, his stuff's been down recently. Um, it is numbered to ninety nine. I'd still just I'd hold off on this one for now Who's okay. that? until uh, Bryce, Bryce Harper. Harper. Yeah, because he's kind of a turd. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't know that personally. I don't know, but you, I've heard rumors. Mickey to Mantle that. to one ninety nine. Another one I'd hold off on. Uh, just not worth it. It's not uh, like low numbered enough. I mean, he is one, it's one of my Mantle, one, one I, exactly. But like I said, the the new people of this generation they want. The prospects, yeah, the uh, the this Future guy, stars. the Wander Franco's, like the top prospects and stuff. They yeah. don't, they it, don't bat an eye to the It's sad for me to think they it's, wouldn't it's, be interested yeah. in the Mick. Yeah, you know the the greatest switch hitter in the history of the world. Well, you know he there was him and Eddie uh, Eddie Murray and uh, Pete Rose are probably the three greatest switch hitters, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, got to be. Yeah. So Mike Trout. Another one from Donners to two ninety nine. I would get this one graded just because Trout stuff is selling like crazy right now. It's okay. just through it's it's his like second year just base card. So say like this was his second year and we pulled a base card. He's selling for almost a hundred dollars. Wow! And it's there's m like probably a million of them printed. You know, short of putting his uniform on a card like David Ortiz did here, right? Is that what this yeah. is? It's a uni yeah. piece of his uni. That's game used. They should <clears throat> with Mike Trout. They should put little pieces of his pants. <laughs> I call it trouser trout. <laughs> what do you think? I like it. Yeah, Ben likes it so because Ben's a sick man. Uh, so this is the poll right here. Yeah, that was the congratulations. You have just received a major league material card from 2020 Topps Baseball Series Two. This is my proudest moment of today's podcast. Today, this one right here. here Pulling this out for our boy Corey over here, who's going to take this card and grade it. No. Um, you're gonna keep this one? Uh, what are you gonna do? You gonna put it on the market? Come down to Sports World and it'll be in the to showcase tomorrow <laughs> morning. <laughs> and, and by the way, this is not available at Sports World. This is from my own personal no. collection. I want to remind people of this before we close out our broadcast here: that this is a one of a kind item. And I, you know, what charity should I give the proceeds to? What would be a good one? Um, I think the uh, Balding Mid Middle Aged Guys Association, uh, the Human Fund. Why don't you <laughs> give it to the Human Fund? This is the signed Armand Lamontagne, one of a kind, num num numbered print of the of Joe DiMaggio, the streak. And you know, it's too bad dad, your dad wasn't here because your dad always brings stuff to yeah. the show, uh, like he did. Uh, next week, I'm going to bring a Carl Yastrzemski autographed bat. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. So what do you think of those Ben Simmons rookies? There's two rookies there. Oh, you got some more here. One was the slick picks. One so this the one's the artist proof. These are slightly better. Um, it says it right down there. Yep. They just make slightly less. Um, still, I'd, I'd probably get both of those graded. Uh, definitely get this Tatum graded. Uh, uh, his stuff. I know I can't look too close uh, via the camera, but if you, Corey, look close enough to the corners, probably a best of nine. Up. What happened yeah. to the corners? It just came that way. It came that way, yeah. Yeah. That's no Unfortunately. good. Unfortunately. That's too bad. Now, Tatum's hot property right now. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, big stuff, huh? He's the guy who they're all saying is going to be the next superstar. Yeah. Like, and it's crazy to think, like, you know, a Boston guy we picked third overall with, like, a stacked draft yeah. is going to be better than all of them. You know, it's like. Yeah, he's, yeah. he's got but some magic there. Yeah, it's. So, he's a hot property in basketball and baseball. It's uh, Trout. It, Trout. Who's, uh, who's uh, the, big, the big football or, or, ba or I know those cards. Patrick are Mahomes. Mahomes. Is the big one there. Yeah. Brady. And then uh, Zion Williamson, John Morant, and, and LeBron are just, it's. Yeah. It's the, like. I was telling you last week the seventeen thousand dollar case. Yeah. The, if you pull the Zion rookie patch auto, there's ninety nine of them. It's a hundred thousand dollars. Oh. Yeah. So you want to go halvesies on one of those? Mike? <laughs> yeah. You know, a hundred thousand. Well, just, I'll just bring one in next week. Don't worry about. Oh. It. <laughs> I'm telling you, that's big money. It takes me like a month to make that. <laughs> <laughs> crazy. Well, craziest. Corey, thanks for coming up. Hey, and, anytime. And Appreciate pinch it for Phil. 
who's not feeling well today, you tell yeah. him to give him, give him our, our Absolutely. very best. Absolutely, I will. Appreciate it. And we'll see him next week, I hope. Uh, if he's yeah. feeling, I hope he's feeling better like today. Yeah. Uh, and in the meanwhile, our, our thanks to Ben Kitchen. Uh, what do I do with these empty pack wrappers? Eat them. <laughs> we'll be back next week. The views and opinions expressed by the hosts, guests, or callers of this program do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the Studio 21 Podcast Cafe, the United Podcast Network, its partners or affiliates.